Good morning and welcome to East Delft Lakes where I'm here today with a few other boys from Team Nash and today we're going to be going fishing but it's not your usual day fishing, it's fishing with a twist because as you can see in front of me I have a water box, there's three others behind me and what's inside this water box this is all we're going to be allowed to use, absolutely no exceptions. It's going to be an interesting day so without further ado let's get these handed out and crack on with the day's fishing. Right then lads, four boxes. All you're allowed to use is what's in one of these. Who wants the first one? Yes, please. Yeah, you want so that one up. Ooh, a lot of squid in that. One, two, or three, Henry? Uh, two. I can't one it is. He's give me, he's give me <laughs> that one. He's giving me the good one. Yeah, yeah. Let's feel your. Let's feel the weight of your royal stitch up. <laughs> Nothing else. No mind it. Ooh. Ooh. Right, so you all have your boxes. Inside those boxes are a bit of bait and a bit of terminal. So you're going to have to give your normal tackle boxes over. The camera going to take everything away from you. You can use your needles and things like that, your baiting tools. But other than that, what is in that box you have to use? Leads and everything, that's fine. But what's in that box? No exceptions, all right? So... Baiting poles? Baiting poles are fine. Any tools like that, it's not a problem. Um, but yeah, it's terminal tackle and bait. Right, well, that is all you're allowed to use in said box. But we can take hair stops, needles... Yeah. Baiting tools, yeah, yeah, things like that. And it's just whoever catches the most. Putty. Putty's already in there, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So. Can we look in the box? Not yet. You've got to do that to swim. It's a surprise. How do we pick swims? Good question. How are we picking swims? We're gonna to have to do a draw. Time for a draw. How are we gonna do the draw? Shortest stick. Longest stick. Pick a stick. <laughs> yeah. no, three of them are long, one of them short. So whoever pulls the shortest one gets the first draw. Right, go on then, Henry, you go first. Oh, that's, Ooh, that's a long one. That's, that's a long one. That seems long. Oh, well. Who's going next, Tommy? It's a long stick. Just point at it. Yes. Oh! He's done it. First. Okay, Tom's first. Give us that back. Uh. Right, my go. Point it. That's long that. Pick the smallest straw. Oh, I'm the, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the shortest one. <laughs> Great. Oh, for God's right. sake. Than... Whatever. <laughs> yeah. I'm last. Right, right, okay then. So, right, Tommy's first, Tommy's first, Alan's second, I'm third, and Henry's fourth choice. So, Tom, do you know where you're going? No, because we're still in the car park. <laughs> okay, right, then let's go through the gate. I'm going in here, I'll, I'll come back second. Alright, I'm going the other lake then. No, I'll go in the other lake. <laughs> You're such a wind up. <laughs> Cut. So then, we've just arrived. I've come out first in a draw, which was not like me in the slightest and the result of that I've got choice of either lake and any of swims on those lakes. Um, my approach for the day, all dependent on what's actually in my box which I've yet to open, uh, I'm going to keep it quite mobile I think, we'll see how that pans out but I'm guessing looking at the lakes they're small intimate venues you know um, so I want to keep disturbance to an absolute minimum. It screams sort of baiting pole, you know, it's quite small, there's islands, there's snaggy margins. I don't really want to be casting a lead around, so if I can get away with a baiting pole, that is exactly what will be my approach. Again, depending on what bait is in the box, I'm going to go for sort of a bite at a time. In an ideal world, there'll be a sort of a bit of squid, nice bright pop-up or bottom bait maybe, but we can just enough to nick a bite and um, we'll go from there. Looks like there's a bit of confusion over swim choice. Um, Al's actually gone in where I wanted to go, so I'm on the back lake with Al, I think. Um, not too sure where to go, I'm sort of toying between two areas of the lake. So what we're going to do is we're going to stand in the swim pool for 20 minutes where I get a really good view of the water, see if I see anything show, will help, uh, help me make my decision. That's the plan. Hope you catch a few fish. Let's go do this. So in terms of the actual fishing today, we're not allowed to use our own terminal tackle. We've been given a set of water boxes and whatever's inside those is exactly what we have to use. I've handed my tackle box over, they've taken it from me. So let's go have a look at exactly what is in these water boxes. Walkie talkie to start with, keep in touch with the boys. Good morning losers. Any losers out there? Testing, one, two. 
see who's winning, see who's catching. Right, sweet corn, great. Sweet corn, perfect. Great for this time of year. Just in case we get hungry. Some scrappy squid pellet. Scrappy squid pellet. Pellet, result. The best pellet in the world, in my opinion. Flake. Scrappy squid flake. Flake. Flake, love it. That is gonna be my go-to. 15 mil boilies. Kilo 15 mil boilies. 15 mil squid. And 15 mil boilies. So I can make a nice little mix there. Some cultured pop-ups. Scopet squid cultured pop-ups. Cultured pop-ups result. Scopet squid cultured pop-ups. Again, something I use in my own land angling anyway, so that's absolutely fine. Citrus pop-ups. Citrus pop-ups. Citrus pop-ups. Ooh, citrus. Whoa, my favourites. I do like a pink one. So it's looking good so far. Alfie, you've not done me over with this. A little bit of liquid as well. Scopet squid liquid bait soak. Bit of liquid, always helpful. Right, we've got some components to actually tie a rig. Right, anti-tangle sleeves for the zigs. It could get a bit ziggy later. Zig flow for the zigs. Ready tied Ronnie claws. Ready tied Ronnie claws. I think they'll be my first port of call because they're already tied for me and that's going to save a hell of a lot of time. It's all good gear. I really thought it was going to be a stitch up. Yes, dark silk leg clip pack, perfect. It is can be quite silty in places in here, I've been told. More zig screws. More zig screws. Armour link. Putty. Bait screws. We've got tungsten tubing bead. Should I wish to fish a helicopter, I presume, on tubing, because there is a tubing only rule here. Shrink tube. Perfect. Ring swivels. Oh, good luck. Good luck. I'm happy with that. Tungsten hook. Kickers. Uni swivel. There's my helicopter booms, heli sleeves. For bottom baits, there's some long shank twisters in there. And a floater claw. This is good. I'm happy. Right, let's get the rods out. I think the first job at arriving at any venue is knock up some bait, get some glasses, and go for a good wander around. I've kind of secured this swim now, and yeah, I'm just gonna go around, trickle a little bit of bait in, try not to get spotted putting that bait in. Um, get some rods out, get fishing. One, one rod rigged up. Ronnie Claw, happy days there in there. To be fair, I wouldn't use anything else if I had the choice. If I was using my own tackle, I'd be using one of these anyway. So that is a bonus. That is it, Ronnie Claw. And then, uh, like I said, I'm going to loop to loop that on that ring swivel. And it just gives you a little more pivot point. If I had an entangle sleeve on, you almost got like the foam trying to pull it up at the halfway. But it can sit up on that ring swivel. And then hopefully, because I have no idea what a bottom's like, could be silty, could be clay, but I'd rather play it safe. So. There she is. Look at that. Surely, it's just unfair. Set this one up somewhat differently. The lead system is exactly the same. Tube in, lead clip, long range of lead. that will hopefully sit nicely down in that soft substrate. But rather than using Ronnie Claw, my other options are, I've got some armor link, but it's 25 pound, it's quite thick. It would be my go-to hook link normally, but I want to fish a smaller bait and the problem with something like this is to create the hair section I'm gonna to have to double it over and it's gonna be very very thick to pass for example a bit of sweet corn or a whittle down bottom bait onto so I've decided to use mono as my hook link it's kind of underused but very very effective I've also gone for a small look it's smaller than I'd like it's a size 12 float claw but yeah I've kind of created a reverse KD. I've whipped all the way up until I'm in line with roughly the point. Then I've pulled the hair back, whipped three or four times on the other side of the hair and then gone over it back through. What it does do with a mono, because it's relatively stiff, it's only 10 pound zig flow, but it does close that gape of the hook up. And I really want it to sit something like that a bit straighter. So I need to put something on here. Um, normally I'd use a small kicker, haven't got any. I've got medium ones, but they're gonna be too big for, for this shank size. But I have got a little bit of shrink tube. So that's what I'm going to use, tiny little section of shrink tube just to stop that gape of the hook being closed up too much and setting it something like that. Lovely. Even on mon mono, this Klingon putty sticks so well. So two tiny little blobs just along the length. Perfect. On first inspections, I want to get a rod out there as quick as possible because it's 7 a.m. and bite time is now. So I think the sensible thing would be to fed a rod up, get the leg clip kit out, fed a bit of tubing on, leg clip, ready tied Ronnie, bit of bait, bait and spoon, margin, bosh. We'll be done by lunchtime. Tom. We could probably wrap this up in a couple of hours if you want. 
get down a pub that's not open because we're in lockdown. Come on then. I decided to fish the front lake and go on purely what James the owner's told me about what's been caught recently. There's a few guys on here just a few days ago that had a few fish between them in a day, fishing to a sort of margin to my right. So I went with it, uh, got round into the swim, instantly saw fish jump. However, they were to my left and not on the, the snaggy margin that I presume they would be. I ain't seen nothing. No, I ain't seen anything, man, but got nothing to go on yet, but. Sun's gonna come out, hopefully. We'll see, we'll find them, I'm sure. So I've got one rod in this swim to the left, out to the island, where I see the fish jump. One rod about 20 yards down in the next swim, fishing to the, to the snaggy margin on James's recommendation. And now I'm gonna chill out and see what happens in the next hour or so. Sadly for me, I did come out last in the draw. However, there's a lot of space here for us, so it's not too bad. I end up on the back lake. There's an island just in front of me as well, so I put one rod towards the island, scabbard squid called your pop-up, a few handfuls of flake, very little trap. I did the same with the left-hand rod that I put on the showing fish, uh, but this time I use a citrus pop-up just to see if there's any difference, see if the fish are preferring one bait over the other. It's that sort of, it's that time of year when it's not quite spring yet, it's not winter either, and uh, the, the spring's when I use scabbard squid a lot more, winter's when I use citrus a lot more, so it's a sign of that in-between period, so let's just see if the fish are favouring one over the other. Now it's just a case of hopefully I can't pick in one of the baits up. Sun is starting to peak out, so I'm thinking Zeke's going to be the answer later on, but at the moment, still early, let's give it a couple of hours, see if we can get a bite on the bottom bait. If not, we'll move over to the Zeke's. Stealth. I don't want to make a noise. These fish are well fished for throughout the year. They know, the, they know the name of the game. So in terms of the bait, or well, my baiting approach for today, I'm not using a lot at all. I'm using the baiting pole to drop my rigs, more for the fact that it's really stealthy and quiet and I don't want to spook these carp. It's a very pressured day ticket venue, so not only now, but throughout the whole year, you don't really know how much bait is going in. These carp have seen it, seen it all before, so all I want to do is create a little parcel of bait. It's almost one, maybe two mouthfuls, just to increase the likelihood of them picking up my hook bait when they do decide to have a feed. I think it just, yeah, just converts to more pickups when you're just giving them that small amount of attraction, and then the pop-up is the first thing they usually find, and it flies straight back into their mouth. And what's going in the pole, as you would have seen me using already, just a pinch of flake, pinch of pellet, pinch of corn for the visual, and then that Scopex squid bait soak just to give it a bit more pulling power um, through, through the liquid element. So very simple, probably the approach I take pretty much all throughout the year, maybe change between citrus if it was colder, but just giving them enough to attract them, but at the same time, get a bite easy. So that sun's come out now, it's more slowly creeping through. I think the second rod's gonna be a zig. I've got that one sort of overhanging tree to my left, which I can reach with the baiting pole. The next one would be a cast, and I don't, I don't want to disturb that in a minute, so I might stick to the right. I'm gonna get a zig tied up. So that black zig screw, bit of yellow foam, tiny little floater claw. Just looks like a little grainy sweet corn fluttering down. Okay, that was one. Literally just put a zig in and then once just rolled off the island, like, I've got to get a rod on that. One show straight away, so I just whipped it in and just got it reasonably close to where that was. But also, if the zig isn't doing it, I've got enough, the bait and pole will get me right under that overhanging tree. So we've got options. Oh, heart and mouth stuff that. It's only a bubba, but... Hey! He's only a bubba, but that's a good sign. Like, it hasn't taken long at all. Fish number one. Right, where's going to be good for you, Sam? I'm off the mark. <laughs> She's certainly one of the smaller fish in the pond, as you can probably tell, but it's a bite, that's the confidence I need. I'm gonna get this back out there quick because we want a bigger one than this, but a beauty nonetheless. 
So there you go. Exactly what was in the box. What? I don't know. Half hour, do you reckon it's had? 30 minutes and it's gone. A little un, but it still works. Um, it's everything you need to catch a carp. Like, same hook. The hook point's absolutely fine. All I've done is just put another pop-up on, another lead, and um, we're good to go again. So I'm happy with the contents of that box. And to be fair, I wouldn't really, I'd fi be fishing a Ronnie Claw and a lead clip anyway, so that's how I fish. I didn't pick the boxes, honestly. How you are? It has been a long, fishless winter for me, and although this isn't like a massive carp, it is so, so welcome. Oh, come on. Oh, that has been a long time coming, that fish. Not just today's session, but it's been a long winter of just doing days, not very successful days. Come on. Lovely, dumpy little mid double common, looks like. Right, before we sort him out, I'm gonna get the rod straight back out. That was, didn't take too long, an hour and a half maybe, if that even. Um, so there could be fish moving around still. So get the rig out, rod back out, let's catch another one. There we go, absolutely nailed within an hour on the ready tied Ronnie Claw. Let's give it a squeak called pop up. Do you have time for the taste to dissolve? If you're a regular ready tied rig user yourself, one thing you can do that can save you a lot of money in the long term is get yourself one of these. Hook Dr. Means you can keep reshotting that hook. You have to buy a whole new rig every time. You can get three or four fish out of the same rig and always guarantee that hook point's really sharp. So, so important. It doesn't take long at all and it's very easy to use. Like with a manual file, I'm rubbish at it. I can't do it. It's one of the most important pieces of kit in my armory, really, because I want all sharp hooks. I can't do it manually. Hook Dr. lets me do it. And now that is ready to go to catch another East Elf carp. go. My first carp of the session and my first proper carp of the year and it is so very welcome. Pressure's on today obviously trying to catch one with the cameras but also I sort of insisted we went to this lake. I really like it here. It's a fantastic complex. I convinced the boys that this is the lake to go to so the pressure was on for me twice as much as it normally is and uh, yeah it's nice to finally catch one. Bit of relief from that pressure and now I can enjoy the fishing a little bit more. I've uh, seen a few more fish showing, obviously caught this one, it's looking good for a couple more bites, still early. Yeah, happy days. Well then, that hasn't taken too long. This was the first one I put out where I'd seen the fish show actually, um, almost as soon as I got into the swim, just off the island there. So it was just quickly assembled the rod together, got it out there with the old baiting pole, literally a handful of bait. It wasn't a lot of bait at all. He's trying to get around that snag. Just enough to get a bite. Bit of flake, bit of pellet, citrus hook bait over the top. She's gone. I was kind of knew it was going to go. Like I see too many shows, a bit of bubbling, and it just felt good for it. If I can manage to steer him away from this snag, which is I think quite a challenge at the moment. Here we go. Then hopefully I'll be able to show you him. It's right there. Pressure off, eh? Not that, not that it's a comp. No there was never any pressure, really. And I know it's not a competition, but it is a competition, isn't it? It is now I'm winning. We're winning. 
He's a nice one, man. Ready tied rig, let's go. Yeah. How about that then? What a way to kick things off. 16 pounds of East Stealth Linear. It's a lovely little carp. This was taken on a left-hand mod, the one I put out first. Um, shipped it out with a baiting pole to where I saw a few fish jump first thing this morning. And it hasn't taken long at all. A little bit of flake, a little bit of sweet corn, citrus over the top. And uh, yeah, one of the one of the ready side Ronnie claw rigs. Happy days, I'm gonna get him back and uh, hopefully we can catch a bigger one. Loud one. Yeah, I see him go over onto the kids' pond. Fair play to him. They're all so caught up. I want to get a big one, I want to get a big one. This is going to be my little gem out the back here. This is the long lake. I think they're going to ignore it. So, although I'm still not quite clear on if there is a winner today, um, I love catching carp. Doesn't matter how big they are. And I know there's plenty of small ones in here, so let's cover all options. That's what I've been waiting for, a one minute bite. I've invested all that time priming areas. And it was just a case of dropping onto one where there was actually some fish. I kind of felt I wasted that 40 minutes on the back lake. Never wasted time because I watched the water, but I didn't see anything, I didn't gleam anything. Come onto this long lake, had a little look down the bottom, nothing. Come up the top end. And yeah, two or three minutes that rod's been out. It's very angry. No four pounders around here. <laughs> <laughs> Result. How about that? It's always a risky one, kind of doing what I've done this morning, and that is not fishing from the off. I, I could have easily slung a citrus pop up out there and, and caught quickly. You know, the lads have all caught um, before I'd even got a rod in the water, really. But um, yeah, it's come good. And I'm pretty confident that I can keep on my toes for the rest of the day. There's gonna be other opportunities like this. Um, this first fish here took about a minute or two, the bottom fish, no more than five minutes. Uh, and I'm relying on that tactic today. I've baited like eight or 10 different areas. I'm just gonna keep on top of everything, keep looking and find some carp and look for some opportunities. Proper mega ones. Yeah, it was exactly what I was looking for, quick bites. Um, and it, it kind of paid off for me, walking around and dropping that little bit of bait in. It, it, it had worked in my favorite last. 
Um, dealt with those two fish and decided probably worth sticking out for another sort of half hour, an hour. Did that and then had a double take. Um, the first one was a common and it really rucked. Um, it wasn't a massive fish, uh, 15, 15 and a half pounds, something like that. And uh, it really put up a good scrap and I'd only had it on sort of seconds when the other rods go in and yeah, got the common in the net, but sadly didn't manage to uh, land the second fish. Never even felt it by the time I got to the rod. But yeah, three bites, was really happy. Um, come back round, been to see all the boys, seen Tom, seen Alfie, uh, seen Henry, and decided to come now onto the back lake with the hope of not necessarily catching a better fish, but I'd quite like one of the koi or the ghosties um, that East Elf is quite famous for. That would really be a nice end to the day for me. Oh no, 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 oh I'm gutted about that. Back out there, no that weren't a two pounder either, just bumped him. You're just a lucky elf on that one. I felt that a little bit actually, my stomach still feels a little bit sick. But it's just a friendly competition. Some bit of fun and games. <laughs> right, I've just put the island rod back out after unfortunately just losing one. Uh, it just happens, it's just, just the name of the game. I've been on a good run of hook to land ratio recently and it was just, just kited on the surface, sort of rolled over and hook come out, but nothing I could do about that one. The hook point's still perfectly sharp. I'm using exactly the same rig. It's gone straight back out there. More than happy with that. All I've done though, is just increase the lead size from a two ounce to a three ounce. Um, I was using a two ounce just in case it was really soft, but I can tell as it's going down um, that you're getting a firm enough donk on the top of the rod tip. So three ounce should be absolutely fine. It might just give it a little bit more purchase, but um, yeah, just one of those things. I'm still confident, it's still early in the day. Uh, let's see how things progress. Tell me, you had one. Oh, I'm glad you asked, Henry. Yes, I have, my friend. A nice 16 pound linear. How big was your one? Oh, yeah, 16 pound, one ounce. I reckon mine was, I'd guess it at so I've got the biggest so far. Mine was uh, 16 pounds, six ounces actually, but I didn't think I weren't going to mess around with ounces. Who does that? Uh, mine was 16 pounds, seven. I, uh, I wrote it down wrong. I put a one, it looked like a seven. Uh, I mean, I put a seven, it looked like a one, but it was actually a seven. A little change up, right hand rod is becoming left hand rod because we've seen one on this left margin. Gone a bit quiet for a while after that fish, not a lot was happening, didn't have nothing to go on. I've just seen one bosh on the left hand margin just next to us, just to the left of a nice snag and I think I can reach him with a baiting pole. Um, the right hand margin that was meant to be the banker spot hasn't really done anything, it just looks a bit dead over there so with these short day sessions you absolutely have to always act on what you see. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. It's not too far from where I've had the bite from, sort of same quarter of the lake if you like, so looks like that's where they're holding up. So I'm going to quickly get this up, put it next to the other one, get it out there. What was that? Get it out there and um, see if we can catch him. Come on in. Get him on. That left hand rod that I put out on the snag, um, shortly after putting it out, I received a real vicious sort of indication. And as I'm feeling, sorry, as I'm fishing back leads, you don't usually get that. It's either all or nothing. So I think I may have been done. Um, reeled the rod in, 
the bead was round a little bit, round the shank a little bit, I think I've been done. Anyway, I've put that rod back out there, same rig for now. Um, but the right hand rod, which done the fish this morning, albeit four hours ago, hasn't done anything since and I've seen very little activity over it. So I think it's time to change that and move it somewhere. Um, there's a nice little cove in the, in the island opposite there. We did see one Bosch there first thing this morning. Um, and judging by the margins, it's really deep very quickly in the margins. And I've got a feeling the islands are exactly the same. So that little cove in there could be an absolute shout. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to tie a new rig up and I'm going to fine tune everything, I think. Um, something a bit less, a bit less cumbersome. Um, see if that, see if that gets us a few more extra bites. Uh, well, I've decided to uh, try and up my game a little bit and try something a bit different. I've, after speaking to most of the guys, I know Bar Allen probably uh, doing something a bit crazy as well. I know Henry and I know Alfie have using or have been using the old ready-made Ronnie's and whilst I've caught my fish on it and so have they I just feel maybe we could be getting more bites and uh, so I thought on one of the rods I'll try something with a little bit more finesse you know make use of make use of the items in my tackle box I haven't really used many of them yet to be honest so uh, I've come up with this basically it involves some zig flowers the hook link a uh, couple of bits of putty on there uh, float a claw size 12 Nice little kicker on there, tied knotless knot with a couple of bits of corn straight out of the can. Um, now obviously if I was casting that, the chances are the corn would just come off with it being a soft hook bait. However, I'm putting it out with a baiting pole so I've not had an issue there. Didn't, have, didn't bring any hair stops with me because it was against the rules and I always abide by the rules. Probably the only one that has done so today I believe. So I've cut off a little bit of one of the clear XO anti-tankle sleeves and used that as a hair stop. Um, yeah, so I'm going to try that. I've shipped that out to the right hand spot that I've been baiting all day. Um, yeah, we've, we're into the last sort of three or four hours of the day now and just need to nick another bite or two. It's been a bit quiet here the last few hours. Um, not a lot to show for my efforts. Sometimes you've got to go with what your gut's saying. So I've tied up another little mono rig, exactly the same as the last one section of uh, zig flow, little size 12 float claw, a little bit of shrink tube, and then I've taken a cultured pop-up, removed the skin from it, that's the good bit there, so I'm gonna keep that, I'm not throwing that away. Got a bit of cultured pop-up on top, and I've got a bit of a straight bottom bait on the bottom, and I've made that really, really critically balanced. I'm gonna take some of the paste, and I'm gonna mold it back around it, just to form the ultimate hook bait, get it laid back down there. Well, just thinking about having a move, maybe sticking some zigs out, and we're in. Oh, nice mirror. Yes. Number two, sorted. Nice little mirror. Number two, a nice little stocky mirror. Again, from the island spot, just have to redrop in it. Although that island spot's done two bites now, and I've got two rods on it at the minute, I think that um, I think they are getting up in the layers. Like it's getting nice and sunny with that sort of winter spring period where they do like to get in the upper layers to keep as warm as possible. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep one rod on there, but the other rod I'm gonna change over to a zig and put it in the bay where I've seen a couple of koi swimming around. It's really murky water here, so you're just gonna see the koi where there's koi there's probably going to be a few normal carp as well. So I'm going to get a, a zig out there, a couple of foot under the surface, and hopefully catch one of the nice big scaly mirrors that live in here. That's the target now. Well, we hadn't even done pictures of the last one. And my rod rattled away again, and it looks like upper double, possibly a scraper 20, nice scaly mirror. I was just talking about. Same spot again. It's a tip there. Um, one Alan's taught me. If you've got a spot going, get the rod back out straight away. Don't faff about with the fish, get it back out. Capitalise on that productive spell. And I'm picking up the other rod. And it's paid off. So we've got the original fish in the net because we didn't get pictures, so we put that back in there. And then got another one on. Yes, there we go. Same spot. 
two nice mirrors. And as I just said, get it back out as quick as possible. So I'm going to get that rod back out and I'm going to deal with these. Happy days. Word spread about my success and being sheeped up by none other than Alan Blair. He's gone over there, that sabotaged my plan of zigs because that's where I was going to put them. Still might put one zig out into the main body because as you can see it's probably getting warm now, it's quite nice. But I think they're going to move up in the layers, keep this rod here where it's, um, where it's doing a few bites but yeah, Blair has sheeped me up. I've heard there's rumours of rule breaking. <sighs> Not only are they banned for the match, they're banned from the fishery. So, double naughty for Blair. I'll be stealing these. I just can't let him catch me because he'll fire me. He is my boss. I'll see you in a bit. Oh, mate. Well, just doing photos of that first one, just getting around to do the pictures. It rattles off again, showing how important it is. If you've got a productive spot going, get the rod out again quickly. Not quite as big as I first thought. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> there's, a, there's a chase. What have you stolen? <laughs> Don't run, you scare the fish. He's got contraband, he's using contraband. <laughs> Blair wins. Just as I was doing photos of the last one, it's interrupted by this guy. Rod, same spot again. Ronnie Claus, Scobit Squid Culture pop ups, doing the work. I actually, had another rod not too far away on a citrus pop up. That's not done any bites. I've reeled that in, put a, uh, put a zig rig out. I thought this was a little bit bigger when it first came in with its high back. Um, but yeah, don't think it's quite the 20 I'm after, so hopefully we get a bigger one. But it's nice to know that I've got a nice little spot going. And fingers crossed that does a few more fish as well. Yeah, not long at all after redoing it. Sorry, I'll just focus in on this one. I'm a little bit nervous after last time. My legs, no matter what it is or what you know what the stock of the lake is, my legs go to jelly every time. Cliche, but it's just like why we love it, don't we? Scaly one. That's about one. Heart is in the mouth, I'm not going to lie. This time. Hey! <laughs> oh, that'll do. Just about getting that one out to do a piece of camera and uh, the other one's away. And that's been out for a while today when I reeled it in, I had a massive snag on it. So I could have been wasting time, but not wasting time anymore. Nice. It's quite dark. It was all right at first. I thought it was going to be an easy net. It would have been. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's hey, cheers, mate. Right. That's a sight I ain't seen in a while. Two in one net. Hey. <laughs> a common and a mirror. Lovely. Well, there we go. I was uh, getting a little bit impatient, redone both of the rods, so I had a little bit more confidence, put them both over to the island. That's where I see most fish activity. And uh, yeah, I got this one in the net, and then that common was uh, on the other rod, so I ended up with two in one net, which has been a, a little while since I've seen that site. So, what a result, eh? This is a beautiful one, this one as well. Really happy. Yeah! Game on. Right, I finally sat down. I've got both of those rods back out. I've 
Tommy's away. Yes. Sweet corn rig has come good. It's not been out there long at all, actually. Probably about half an hour, maybe, a little bit longer. Looks like the change has made a difference. Oh, God, I thought it'd come off then. The little zig flow hook link and the tiny two bits of corn. What a good call that was. Hopefully we can get him in. Dare I say, he feels all right, but you never really know what he's want. Oh, I'm happy with that one. Not only is he a lovely scaly one, again, yet another scaly one. I've also caught him on my new, my Zig Flow Sweet Corn big. That makes me happy. Well, it looks like things are really kicking off now. Um, I've just got mine in the net. I'm just going to put a fresh rig on, get it back out there quick time. Um, and whilst I'm doing that, I've just heard over my shoulder Alfie's alarm and it looks like he is in again. He is in again. Yes, popping off on the front lake. Again, this hasn't been out there like five minutes. It just shows a lot. I've been getting these bites in, like within 10, 15 minutes after I, because one time I've snagged up. Unlucky, or I don't know, however you want to say it. Maybe I was a little bit unlucky that he'd fallen on a bit of tree that had fallen off, but I wasn't ready for him then. <laughs> Literally, that's a bit of improvising there. There we go, that's number four of the day for me. Four or five bites, and I think, as it stands, in terms of numbers, I've caught the most. Not that I'm counting or anything, but yeah, he's uh, not the biggest of the day, but good to get a bite. Not long left now, but it's been a great day's fishing. And there she is, fish number two. Uh, my biggest of the day, the biggest of the day I believe, Dan. Yep. 19 pounds two, they're getting bigger and we still have three or four hours to go. So fingers crossed for an even bigger one. I was about to put the left hand rod out, move the left hand rod to where I've seen that fish show on the island. I was in the process of doing that. The right hand rod, which had only been out there maybe 10, eight, 10 minutes, has gone again. Um, we've got a small one, he's a ghost, he's a right little character, so I'm going to unhook him, get another Zig Flow, Floater Claw, Sweet Corn rig tied up, which is definitely making a difference, I feel, uh, and get it back out there, because I think it's game on now for the next two hours until we have to go home, so I need to capitalise on it. It's gone already. Yeah. What the... How long has that one been out there, then? Uh, minute. No, it's game on. He's not bigger. Uh, what do I do now? Well, here's the first of two of that mad little flurry we had a little while ago. He's a right little colourful character. But I'll take him. And here's the second of the brace and fish number four of the day. Again, it's around probably 15, 16 pound mark. But uh, I'm not bothered one bit, we'll take them all. I'm gonna get this one back now. I've got no rods in the water at the moment, so I'm gonna get them both back out. Probably got about an hour left of fishing. I'm gonna try my absolute hardest. Let's catch another one. Nothing's happened here. It's gonna be the last move of the day for me. Got about an hour and a half left. Tom and Alfie have had a really productive last couple of hours. I think Alfie's on four fish now. Tom's into another fish as we speak. I think he's probably on about four, maybe even five. Me, I'm gonna move around to 
pretty much where I started and concentrate my final efforts underneath that big willow up in the corner there. Yeah, let's try and nick one more before we finish. crazy battle underneath the trees. Had to be quite cautious of that light hook link, but yeah, it's gone again. That was the half and half, half the culture pop up on top and the squid bottom bait. This might be the last one for me, but never say never, rods are still out and there's still a little bit of daylight left. It's been a really great day. That's nice, that is a nice one. Yeah, right, that was absolutely incredible. As I said, they were just mounting something off the surface, came round, saw one down there, put the scope at squid, trimmed down, called your pop upon it, saw it come up, this is a nice linear. This is definitely the nicest fish I've caught, will, well, hooked today, and I really want to catch it. <laughs> Yes! Yes! Oh, oh what an ending. <laughs> Cheers, Alf. Woo! What a buzz. That was so good, wasn't it? <laughs> that is how you end the day. I'd been on the other side of the lake and just seen a few ripples on that windward bank. Came round, this guy was milling around. Dropped a little pop up on its head. There we go. What a fish. That is in March off the surface. I'm so happy. It's been good, isn't it? It's been really the good. Whole day's been it's great. been no, really, it's good. really good. Mega carp, lovely surroundings. The company wasn't bad. <laughs> yeah, it was, right. <laughs> it was all right. It was all right. Well done, boys. Cheers. Coming back? Yeah, too right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That'll do. The challenge, I was a little bit uneasy doing it, if I'm honest. I didn't really want to be presented with a box of unknown stuff to go fishing with. I like my work box and you know all my usual bits but do you know what I've really enjoyed it. What a brilliant day's fishing. I can't remember the last time I had that many fish in the day and uh, yeah it's just been thoroughly enjoyable. It just goes to show you really we've only had a little box of terminal tackle each, a little bit of bait and we've caught loads of fish. We've had well over 15 fish between us. It's been a brilliant day sport and it's certainly I'm gonna, something I'm going to take into my own angling. I've had a great day's fishing here at East Delft. Uh, at times it seemed like it's been incredibly difficult angling other times it seemed incredibly easy. Uh, it's just the way it's gone today, but I've learned quite a lot. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself, and it just goes to show you don't need all the terminal tackle and bait in the world to catch fish. As long as you get the basics right, get your location absolutely spot on and keep your eyes peeled, uh, and when you do see a show, take advantage of it, then catching carp isn't actually that difficult. <laughs>